Hello, welcome to my garage. I've been watching a lot of YouTube lately, and I like to watch things done by makers. I've seen a lot of the makers uh, making a gingery lathe, and uh, I thought that was the coolest project ever, so I think I'm going to make my own. Uh, there's a book on Amazon that you can get. I'll provide a link in the description, but it is Building Your Own Machine... Building... Build Your Own Metalworking Shop from Scrap by David Gingery. And uh, essentially it walks through a series of projects. The uh, larger projects have smaller projects uh, that come along with them. The first large project is a charcoal foundry. Uh, that's for melting metal. And you'll need to melt the metal in order to cast the parts for all the other things in the book. Uh, series of books. Uh, but this one is all the series put together. Um, so one of the smaller projects in the charcoal foundry section of the book start off with a sand molding table. So we have to do a process uh, where we take a special treated sand called green sand and we use that to make molds of wooden parts uh, that leave a, a hollow space inside the mold that we can then pour metal into. Uh, in this case, uh, we'll start with aluminum. Um, I've picked up all the parts for the sand molding table and I'm going to build that today. And you can follow along. A link to this book is in the description and also a link to some plans that I made in Fusion 360 for the molding table will also be in the description. Um, let's get started. To build the sand molding table, we'll need just a few things. You need two 8-foot, eight, eight 2 by 6 planks. You'll need a 2-foot by 4-foot half-inch board, uh, plywood. Um, yeah. And then I've got three bricks, center blocks, just concrete blocks, uh, as the legs. So you'll need six total. Um, you will also want one 2x4 to complete the project. Now that we've got our materials together, I did have the Home Depot cut them down. I took uh, the 8 foot 2x4 and I cut it into two pieces. One piece is about 30 inches long and the other piece makes up the rest and I did that for both boards. So that gives me the uh, front to back piece and the side to side piece for both ends. Um, take it over to the table saw and we'll get cutting. We need to cut these long pieces. I measured the end of the plywood that this board is going to have to be attached to and it came up just shy of the measurement that it's supposed to be. So it is one tick short of 48 inches. So we're going to go ahead and mark that with this straight edge. I've placed the straight edge in the right spot. I'm going to remove the measuring tape and I'm going to draw the line. Next step is to line that up on the cross feed. Right. Before we cut the board, we need to make sure that the blade is the right height. So the way we're going to do that is the board should be roughly one and a half inches tall. I'm seeing one and a half inches, pretty much exactly. So we're going to put the blade just over that to be safe. So right now the blade is under an inch, but the blade is now one and a half inches tall. All right, time to cut the board. Remember, keep your hands clear of this area. Now that we've got the first cut, I'm going to re-measure it after it's been cut to make sure that we're close enough to the dimension that we wanted. And we are just a hair over. 
which is fine. I'll take that. All right, time to do the next board, which is going to start with measuring the half inch plywood at the back. This was the front. We're going to do the back now. And um, then I'll bring the board over here to cut. The back of the plywood was just a hair longer than the front of the plywood. So we're going to make this board just a little bit longer. I've got the measuring tape lined up. I've got the square lined up. So we're just going to remove the measuring tape. Double check because I just tapped the board right there. Remove the measuring tape. And draw the line. All right, we've got it lined up. Time to make a cut. second piece. Now the plans that I made in Fusion 360 outline the device that we're going to make. We've got the half inch ply at the bottom. It's 48 inches by 24 inches. These boards here should be 21 inches. Um, I'm going to measure both sides of the plywood and make sure that it's pretty close to 21 inches as long as it is. I'll be, I'll feel okay making the, uh, or 24 inches, I'll be fine making the boards 21 inches. The next thing we have to do is find out whether these boards that we just cut off, or the boards that are pre-cut at Home Depot, are closer to 21 inches. I think these might be. Alright, so after taking those measurements, um, the space that we have to fill is 1 8 short on both sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just take 1 8 off of 21 inches. I'm not going to do the math for that, I'm just going to measure. So this board is 23 inches. This other board should be pretty much the same. Yep, just over 23 inches. So we will follow the exact same procedure we just followed for cutting the other boards to cut these boards. And then we'll be back for assembly. Okay, the next thing to do is to connect the long boards to the short boards, and we want to do that as close to a 90 degree angle as we can. So I've got this uh, 90 degree clamp that I'm going to use. Uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, this isn't fine woodworking, but this whole project is about precision and accuracy, so we're going to try to do our best. All right, so they are an inch and a half wide. So one and a half divided by two is 0.75, right? So right, right there, does that, does that make sense? <clears throat> half, we come over half, come over half. Yeah, right there. So, just mark
There, that's better. And then I'll, I'll draw the straight line here. And then we'll cut it up later. One. All right, that's two. Should be able to undo the clamp and get the box. There we go. Now, we continue our line up. One more screw in. There we go. It's one half of the uh, the boards that we need. Okay, we know this one is probably the best one, so we'll put that one in first. We're going to clamp and screw that side, and then we're going to clamp and screw this side. Uh, we, first we've got to glue. And we're going to glue up both ends first because after we screw one together, we're not really gonna be able to glue the other. Not really. We wouldn't be able to get the angle we need. All right, let's clamp this one. I want to sincerely apologize. My uh, battery died. I'm gonna have to do shorter clips in the future. Um, so, what you missed, you saw me gluing and screwing one side of these. Uh, I then did the opposite corner. Then I took the two right angles that I had put together and I screwed them together. Then on the underside, I marked a line and I screwed uh, five screws along lengthwise three screws uh, depth-wise, and uh, I made sure that my bricks were uh, in the position that I wanted them to be in to, to give me a good, mostly good, sturdy uh, work surface. Uh, then uh, I already bought this 200 pounds worth of play sand, uh, which we will do later. Uh, I put the 200 pounds of sand, yeah, still in its bags, because I have to do, I have to process the sand before I can actually put it in the table and I want to line the table so that it. the sand doesn't the moisture doesn't soak into the wood I might... but the table seems to hold the sand just fine just a few minutes ago I said I didn't know exactly how I was going to waterproof the um, the molding table well I've decided I've got my supplies laid out here we have some silicone caulking and that is going to go around the edges of the box um, we've got fiberglass resin that we are going to have to mix up. Got a brush for brushing on the resin. And we have two sheets of fiberglass cloth. And then we have some masks because you really do need a respirator when breathing this stuff in or when working with this stuff. All right, so the first step is we'll set the resin and the fiberglass materials aside. I don't think we'll need that. We are going to caulk 
all of the corners so that we can get a fillet. All right. And we're just gonna, just gonna lay that in. All right, now I'm gonna put on a glove and I'm gonna run my finger across all the seams and what we're wanting is just a nice, smooth fillet shape uh, in all of the corners. It has now been 30 minutes and we are ready to start applying resin. What I have found on the internet is that for the resin, we want to mix up small batches and we want to apply some to the wood before we actually put in the fiberglass. This is so the wood can soak up some of the resin. So we're gonna go ahead and get that mixed. Now on the, uh, the can, it says to mix six tablespoons of resin with one quarter teaspoon of hardener. I am not going to mess up measuring cups for this stuff. So we'll get our gloves on, we'll get our respirator on, and we'll try to mix some up. And I'll just... I'm going to assume that this uh, is effectively a tablespoon. So we'll do six of these. That's one. This stuff smells like super glue, or not to us, like it smells like rubber cement. All right, so likewise, we're gonna assume that that is close to a quarter. We'll just dump that in there. We'll get it mixed up. And let's see if we can get it painted on. I don't know if this is how you're supposed to do it, but it's what I'm going to do. I'm going to want about like that. I'll just rip that all the way down. Okay, and we've got to rip it up. All right. Okay. I'm going to lay this in the corner. We want to do the sides. We've finished fiberglassing the sand molding table. <clears throat> We've got to wait for the fiberglass to dry. Uh, so we probably won't touch it for a day. <clears throat> so just leave it sitting there, it'll dry. And then we can trim off slash sand down uh, these rough edges. And uh, we'll call that good. Forgot a part. Fantastic. Forgot two parts. We might have to go and get more, uh, more fiberglass. We'll see. Dang it. What's I dealing with that?